In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, as we come through the fourth, the fourth covenant of the Bible, the commandments, teach us how important they really are, and their basis of all morality. So teach us again that what you have set up in morality is impossible to change forever and ever. And as we go through this, may we understand the meaning of the Ten Commandments and what you have set down in our hearts. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. All God's people said, Amen. The Jewish people have what is called Pesach. And as you recall, that means the Passover. Fifty days later, when they had that first remarkable Passover, in what country? Egypt. They were told that they were to celebrate that every year, but it would never be the same as the first time. When you go to church on Sunday, what was the first time is your 100th time when you're in church. You experience the same thing. See the difference? On that first time, they put the blood on the door. And then they marched for a week and they met the, the Sea of Reeds. And they got really scared because they saw Froggy. Who is Froggy? as Baal Zephon in Exodus 14. They got really scared thinking that he appeared again, the frogs were back, the frogs were back. And then all of a sudden when they seen Froggy come and they turned around and who was coming after them? The Egyptians. God will find a way when there seems to be no way and he opens up the Yam Suf, the Sea of Reeds. The people cross through. And as they crossed through, they made it. But the path that God opens for you can never be the path that anybody else can ever travel. Did you know that? Say you have three children. You may want them to cross on your path. Sometimes they may, but most of the time they will not. So they, you need to, here's your prayer for your three kids. God, open their path for them. Not your path for them. Open your path for them. And when God opens a path for you, guess what will happen? Nobody else can follow on it. Because what happened to their wheels got all clogged, do you remember? And then the water came crushing down, do you remember? And then it took them a ripe old time of, from the time they left Egypt, 50 days. And we have Pentecost. So right now we have the first Pentecost ever. And that's where God forms the fourth covenant. We looked at chapter 19 of Exodus. Everybody with me in Exodus? And we looked at verses 3 to 8. Did everybody see the word covenant in there? How do you say covenant? Breed. Breed. Yeah. A breed. Amen? B-R-E-E-T. But in Hebrew it's B-E-R-I-T-H. And then now comes verse number 16. In order to experience the 50 days, Pentecost, this is the original Pentecost. And we looked at the two words of seeing and hearing. Right now, let me, let me ask you, do you have the Holy Spirit? Probably everybody here will say, I do have the Holy Spirit. But here's how you know you have the Holy Spirit. When you can see and hear. But here's how you know you have the Holy Spirit. When you can see and hear what others can't see and hear. Now you're going to be sitting at your kitchen table and crying over the people who live with you. And you're going to put your head down and cry and say, they don't get it. Because you see and you hear. In Matthew 13, we're reminded that a lot of people are going to, to not see and understand what you do. 
And that's going to go on until they get their hearts churned by God. Amen? So, verse 16. You have to prepare for Pentecost. Now, how did, you, how did they prepare for it? You've got to wash your clothes. You've got to have clean clothes on. What happens when people go to church today? They look like schlabberu. You haven't noticed? What's the second thing they had to do? They couldn't touch their woman or their man. They had to be pure, so to meet God. Even in the most intimate relation that we can have with one another, you don't have it. It had to be prepared for three days. Next, you cannot have an animal. Say you have a puppy dog called Angelica. And Dewey. You cannot have them come near the mountain or you would have no animal left. No animals could go up that. And then what's developing is God's going to call you because you're going to have access to all the sacrifices and the ultimate sacrifice of the cross. And guess what that is? And God will call you for the first time priest. Are all of you priests? Yes. But guess what happened your whole life? No one has developed with you what your priesthood means. So we hope to do that now in this fourth covenant. So we left off in verse 16. On the morning of the third day, you see the third day again? Who was the first person with the third day experience? Martha. In, in, in the whole book of Genesis 22, Abraham was taking up Isaac, and what, what day was he going to sacrifice him? On the third day. On the third day, there was prayer. On the third day, there was praise. On the third day, he carried the wood on his back. Isaac was giving a dress rehearsal for the cross. The name of the mountain would be called Mount Moriah. And if you looked at Jerusalem with me, you could see where the, sec where the Muslims have their dome there. That's not the first temple, it wasn't there. When you go outside the wall of Jerusalem where all the street is going and there's all this rubble, that's the first temple. And that's where King David had his palace. And guess what David did? He was very, very Christian. He wanted his house next to church. He wanted to be so close to God. How many wives did he have? Nine. Can you imagine the laundry? <laughs> Can you imagine when they dried their hair and all the towels all over the place? You can't imagine that. Huh? So the third day, everybody underline the third day. Everybody see the third day? There was thunder and lightning. Now I told you last week as a cliffhanger. It doesn't say thunder in Hebrew. So please start learning Hebrew right away. Forget Tagalog and get into Hebrew. Amen? Now, the word there does not say thunder. The word there is kolot. Q-O-L-O-T, which means voices. So what did they hear? Now, God is going to be audible. And I told you last week from a Jewish perspective, every time God spoke, they dropped dead. Now, what would happen if you two were in your nice place tonight? At three o'clock from the floor comes a voice. <coughs> and he knew it wasn't you. Okay? Would you be scared? God spoke audibly in the first two commandments. And you know what? It scared the hell out of them. They were terrified. Why did God speak twice? Did, did he want to give all the Ten Commandments out? Yes. Yeah. Because he wanted the people to know this. Every time Moses t 
tells you something. You could trust him because you heard his voice too. So this was a guaranteed way of saying, you heard him now. If you circle the word for thunder, and please get a new Bible. By the way, there's no Bible that you can find that has it. In that Bible, it'll say all the voices. Kolot. And you know who pointed this out to me with joy in my heart? Was my rabbi friend. I never knew. Now I read this a thousand times with you. But if you look at Genesis chapter 10, there's all those voices. What did they hear? They heard all of a sudden, all the voices of the whole world crying out to God. How many think that would scare you? As I was driving here, I got a, a call from a man from Cameroon. So, I mean, uh, it's nice talking to people from the nations and they want to come and do a few things together. That's great. So it's good to hear from the nations. So how many here, if you circle the word, everybody put in kolot? So can you, can you understand why they said don't read the Bible by yourself? Do I agree with that? No. But I'm just saying, how many would have ever picked up? It's all the voices. When you look at Genesis 10, there are 70 nations there. When you look at Luke chapter 10, when Jesus sent them out, there are 70 nations going to be represented. The 70 means the whole world will hear the word of God. You got the connections? Okay. So the second thing is they heard, what is they, they hear the, uh, verse 16, thunder and Lightning. By the way, the word lightning there means lightning. No surprises on that one. Yes, sir. Can you look that up uh, in the Greek? Would it say all the In the Hebrew, yeah. In the Hebrew? Yeah. Yeah. You, you can put in there, what is the Hebrew for um, thunder in uh, Hebrews uh, 1916? Exit, exit, right. Sister Celeste. Then he says to us there, and a thick cloud came upon the mountain. Now, when God appears to us, it has to be in thickness. Why? I always give the example, if you were to turn the page to Exodus 34. Because when God meets us, he has to come out of hiddenness. Did anybody go to church on Sunday in the second reading? Mm -hmm. Paul says he was hidden. Now he's revealed. <clears throat> because if you were to see God as he is, what would happen to everybody in this room? You drop dead. Mm -hmm. What happened to them? They, they dropped dead. Because God is so unbelievably what? Pure and we're not. Now what's the first thing... Uh, what would happen if Jesus appeared to this group right now? Would you like it? Put me down, right? What would we all do instantly? We, we dropped to the knees, right? And, and like, whoa. Whoa, hey amen. You think you'd do that? Even Donald was going through graves in the Holy Land. <laughs> Donald was pop. I thought, I thought that was Lazarus coming out. It was Donald popping his head out. <laughs> You should see that, like, Lazarus. And all of a sudden, I, I just heard the ground moving. And it's Donald, he pops his head out. Oh my heavens, there's Lazarus. You, you, ne you, you, never, you never know what's going to happen, amen. You never know. And so a thick nail now. So underline the whole sense of thick nail. When you go to Exodus 34, when God starts to come out of, I always compare it to, I told you that before, that Jesus wore a vest on top of him. The name of the vest was called a haluk. H-A-L-U-K. Everybody say haluk. haluk. Now, on the haluk, he wore on top of what? He wore a hood. I guess you would call that a hoodie. 
Amen? Now, if I had a hood on, I could probably cover, if it was a lot of material, I could even cover my face, right? Look, a, a, a haluk, right? When I take the hoodie off, guess what happens? You can see my face. So what happens here is God has to take off his haluk. Because when God appears to us, he has to come out of his hiddenness to reveal himself to us. When he reveals himself to us, we see Jesus. When did that happen before? In the transfiguration. Do you remember that? Was that scary? Absolutely. Did they hear some voices? Absolutely. Did the ground shake? Absolutely. There was Peter, James, and John. And do you know why James is mentioned before John? Because James, when you go on the Compostela walk, James, at first when he was walking up to the Compostela place where he would die and be buried, is he was so revered that, guess how many people he got converted when he started that walk? Nine. Nine people. You think with the great apostle there would be uh, uh, there'll be a gazillion, only nine. And so he was thinking of giving up and leaving Richfield. And say, no, keep, keep on going, keep on going. And so what happens is God's going to take off his haluk for you so that you can see his face. And right now, when we come into the fourth covenant, you're going to see the face of God like you've never seen it before. And my prayer is that God appears to everybody here. Amen? So to take away all of us, our discouragement. And by the way, you'll see the haluk. Let's see, did you see the haluk yet? That's what Abraham sees when the three men are walking. Mm -hmm. If you go to chapter 34 of Exodus, let me show you the haluk. Is this good stuff, sister? Go to chapter 34 of Exodus. I just want to show you that. Go to verse 5. Or even go to verse 3. Even go all the way back to Genesis. We'll start a little over. No members shall come up with you, and let no man be seen throughout all the mountain, and no flocks or herds feed you from that mountain. Remember, when you want to experience Pentecost, what do you have to happen? No animals. No dewey. No angelic. Verse 4, ma'am. 34, 4. So Moses cut two tables, and it's not the word, it's not the word, um, it cut two tables of stone like the first, and he rose early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded, and took in his hand two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud. Here he comes now, and he's ready to take off his haluk. Descended in the cloud and stood with him there. You got the picture now, and he says, stand, resurrection, stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. So when, when God takes off his haluk, his hiddenness, he reveals his name to you. And if you're in church on Sunday and you heard a good sermon on it, you would say, Paul got all excited, he says, the hiddenness of God is now revealed. Why does our church look so dead? It, it looks dead because they haven't had Jesus revealed to them. They can't see him. Would you like to see him? One day I was in a church and a very exciting thing happened. I was preaching in Spanish and her name was Yole. Yolanda. Yolita. And also I'm preaching about dead bones going to rise again. And she screams out in Spanish, Yo te veo, yo te veo, yo te veo, mi Señor. I see you, I see you, I see you, Lord. And she saw Jesus walking toward her. From that moment on, she got a great conversion to the Lord, and she went back to her native Ecuador to preach the gospel. And I said, I have a dream about you, Senora. I said, my dream is this. 
um, I'm going to be going to Ecuador one day. I'll sit in the first pew. And she said, yes, Father Bill, you'll be up there preaching. I said, no. I'll be there sitting, listening to you preach. That happened. She's, she, was, she went back to Ecuador and was preaching the gospel. Yo te veo, yo te veo, I see you, I see you, I see you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Do you see when God, now look what happens. He's, he's got to come out of the thickness just so you can see him. Sister Celeste. So Genesis 18, when he sees the three men coming towards him, they have that whole look on. Yes. And they have to take that off yes. when they meet him. That's right. And so when Jesus walked, he, had, he wore that. Amen. I just want to show you where that is. Yes, sir. In Genesis 34, yes. Is, so is God's name merciful gracious, so that anyone down next to the next That's God's name, name, yes. Yes. Yes, that is all God's name. And there, there are 13 attributes of God. Now, you get an A for this course, and your wife will get the grade. Mm -hmm. If you produce all the 13 attributes in that. Everybody get this? Does everybody understand how to see God? Here's your prayer. Please, God, come out of your hiddenness so I can see you. How many would like to see him? How many think that would happen, help your life out a little bit? And back with me to 19, sister. All right, everybody see the haluk there? I like that word, haluk. Do you like the word haluk? Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good one. It does. All right, chapter 19, ma'am, of Exodus. Verse 16, ma'am. And a thick cloud came upon the mountain. Now, remember, that's God in his what? Haluk. Does everybody see? Everybody understand? A thick cloud and his haluk. And all of a sudden, a very loud trumpet blast. That's the what? The shofar. Oh! It sounds like somebody sharing their insides with us. Amen? So everybody see the shofar? Oh! And everybody remember what a shofar is? It's the ram's horn. To all the people that were in the camp trembled. So just hearing that, I mean, when you sound off, sister, we tremble. So I mean, just sound, just sounding that, that shofar, they were trembling. It shook the earth. How many, how many know that California was shaken a few days ago? First, yes, okay. verse 17. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. Okay, now what, what was down below on the mountain, all these little camps? Everybody stood at their tent flap. And they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Verse 18, ma'am. And Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke. There's the haluk. Everybody see it? Now, another word for it, as I told you a thousand times, this is called the theophany. Theo is the word for God. Phani is the manifestation of God. Now, one thing about each of our lives, and we might have this difficult, God wants to show himself to you. And the reason why you and I haven't seen God the way we'd like to is that we're all caught up too much in ourselves. We're caught up in maybe our sinfulness and we're caught up with this kind of life. And so we completely miss God and things go past us quite easily. But God wants to always reveal himself to you. Do you believe that? So what is the fourth covenant? Let me reveal myself to you. And one thing I, I, I gotta say, and I need to walk in my faith stronger. God is so real. God is so showing us himself to him. And I'm begging God to do one thing for me. Take away my blindness so that I could see him. Do you see him? So that everywhere you will, I mean, you would drive people nuts if you got to see God a whole lot more than you do. Oh, there he is, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> verse 18 because the Lord descended upon it in fire now God comes upon us in fire when, when did he first uh, uh, so he appears in fire because fire is power it moves of its own and it's something that we don't go up and do what? touch if there was a fire this high would you go and put your hand inside of it? Mm -hmm. may I recommend you don't do that the, I, I, last night there was a young man in Neptune at 17 that died and he died in a, in a small house and his mother screaming and 
carrying on, as mothers do, the fire got to them. So fire is very, very powerful, very scary. We all need it. But yet, don't mess with fire. So God comes in fire. Why else? Because if you read first, um, first Kings 17, 1 Kings 17.1 with Elijah, what does he do? He calls upon the fire. What do the apostles do in Luke chapter 9 when the Samaritans don't receive Jesus well? What do they say? Shake the dust from the Call the fire down. Oh. Let's deal with them. Let's get some fire in here. And the word for fire is esh again. So when they're going to meet God, they're going to meet him in fire. But when they look at the fire, when you go all the way back to Exodus 3, there's a mysterious being inside the fire. The mysterious being inside the fire is the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord is saying to Moshe, Moses, Moses, come on inside the fire and live with me here. Now when's the fire going to come? The fire is going to come in Pentecost. Now, I'm sad to say, I believe in Pentecost, but I'm sad to say most people I know have not experienced it yet. When the fire really has come upon you, you will know inside that you are so different. Have you really recognized that yet? We can go all these programs and all these seminars, and they're all good, but until it really hits you, how many have been to like a thousand seminars and still hasn't hit you? All these programs, and you said that was nice, and you go back to live the way you were. You haven't experienced it yet. So it's time to get some fire. So God comes in, in uh, the fire. Everybody see that? Next he says there, verse number, we're going to verse number 19 now. And the smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln and the whole mountain quaked. So there was an earthquake experience. There is, that's why at the end of time there's gonna be such earthquakes. And by the way, they believe the big one for California will be this year. And the whole thing just... The whole thing, I mean, if you encounter, if you know anybody in Los Angeles, tell them to come to Middletown, New Jersey, right away. Because there's going to be, there's going to be such a shaking going on. Amen? And every, every day when you go to um, update.com, Prophecy Update, every single day, they show you where the earthquakes are happening. And uh, right now there's a ring of fire and all the earthquakes are happening. Uh, and around can't Indonesia, they, that's the ring of fire. So don't they, can't they locate the default where it is? They, they know where it is. California, they California. know where it is. And, when do they think it's and everything, is, everything is moving quite rapidly. They must know when the plates are going to separate. They're all saying it's some, a lot of activities happening right now. So tell them to get on a plane right away and get out of Los Angeles. And Yellowstone. And Yellowstone. Amen. Next. Um, and so the sound, verse 19, man. And the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Oh, oh, oh. It got louder and louder and louder. Now, how many know when you get older, you put your hands over your ears? Did that ever happen? Moses spoke and God answered him in thunder. So now, what was the thunder? Moses is speaking. All of a sudden, he can start to see God because God takes off his haluk. The hiddenness starts to come out. Now, I'm going to promise you that'll happen to all of you. How many have heard of Sister Brige McKenna? The little Irish one. She's heard God speak audibly three times. Mother Teresa heard the audible voice of God too. I was talking to Father Tom Forrest who has died and I believe he'll be a Kenai saint one day. And he was telling me about all the audible voices that God speaks to people. And uh, one day he said to Sister Brige, God's Irish, you know that? He says, what's Sister Brige? And he said, uh, oh yes, Lord. I, I, I want you to go tell the people about my love. And she says, oh Lord, you can keep it. She says, I, I, I realized that I was talking to God and his audible voice is talking to me. <laughs> and she says, I made the fastest act of contrition I could ever think of. 
And she says, you know, I went to Tampa, and she says it was so hot there. I thought it was hell, I was so hot. <laughs> and she says, I went there, and all of a sudden I met these little kids, and all of a sudden the kids went home crying, and they said, Mommy, Mommy, my new teacher speaks Japanese. <laughs> So how many here, well, you got Moses, he's talking, now what happens is that thunder. So what do they hear? It's God's news. What do they hear? They hear the kolot again. So how does God speak? All these nations are crying out for salvation. Is this, is this mind boggling? Now what would happen, you're watching Moses. You're seeing this light show. You're seeing this shaken mountain. You're seeing this thick cloud. You see God coming out and speaking to Moses face to face. And all of a sudden, you start hearing the kolot again. How many think you'd be scared? You hear, sister, louder and louder the shofar. Please, do not get your shofar louder. I can't take it when it goes off once, let alone. Do phonetically the uh, the shofar S-H-O-F-A. S -H -O -F -A. The, the, the Hebrew word. Shofar. Right. You said another word. Kolot. Oh, Kolot. Kolo. Kolo. That's the word for thunder. Kolot. 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 Okay. So we, we can see here a lot of, is this scary or what? This is cool. And this is, this is how we get the Ten Commandments. How many think when you said the Ten Commandments, this background was missing? So Moses now is saying, the people are, are hearing, people are being scared, people want to get out of Carter as soon as possible. People can't afford And the Lord came down, look at verse number 20, and the Lord came down, what does that come down mean? Intervenes. The Lord came down and uh, uh, upon Mount Sinai, what does Sinai mean everybody? The bush? Mm -hmm to the top of the mountain, and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, so they went all the way to the top, and Moses went up, and um, the Lord said to Moses, go down and warn the people, lest they break through to gaze, and many of them perish, you can't see me, and what? Live. You're gonna make sure you listen to my directions. Verse 22, ma'am. And also let the priests who come near to the Lord consecrate themselves. And I say priest, everybody? Kohanim. Now what was God's plan to get every one of us up the mountain? Every one of us had to get up that mountain. Now we blew it because we built what is called a golden calf. And in chapter 32 of Exodus. That's called an apis again, A-P-I-S. And because we couldn't get up the mountain is because we have idolatry in our minds and hearts. Because we're worried about too many things. When you flip all the way to the end, Revelation 1, 6, 7, and 8, it then says we are called a kingdom of priests. Everybody here gets to go up the mountain. Now when you go to heaven, I've got to give you another talk on heaven, sir. When you go to heaven, you will climb a mountain. The new Jerusalem is on a mountain. Match my words, amen? They'll be on a mountain and you will climb it, amen? So what, what because where does God mean us? How do you say mountain again? H-A-R, har. Next he says there, and the Lord says, verse, 20, verse 21, go down and warn the people as they break through. Verse 22, let the priests come near to the Lord, consecrate themselves. Now if you underline the word consecrate, the word consecrate is marry yourself to. Anybody ever get married? Mm -hmm. See that interesting lady in that chair in there? She's consecrated to God to you. Are you happy about that? Yes. All right, good. He said quickly a yes. She's smiling. She says, good. He better say that. That's what she said. So when you're consecrated, you're joined to a person. And in the church, we have a lot of prayers of consecration. Amen? So now, get people, consecrate themselves, lest the Lord break upon them. You cannot see God unless you're consecrated to Him. Because if I see God and I'm not consecrated to Him, what happens? You die. You die. So if I'm consecrated to Him, 
It means to be made holy. So if, if God's going to take off his haluk so I can see him, he's coming out of the darkness so I can see him. When I want to see him, I better be consecrated. So now, how many want to, when you go to church, here's what I want you to say. I consecrate myself to you. How many ever, consecrate, how many ever made prayers of consecration before in your life? Anybody do some consecration prayers? Mm -hmm. Beside that beautiful woman next to you, sir. So everybody do, now, you can't join the person until you're consecrated to them. In Amos chapter 3, verse 2, we're told you can't walk with another until you're agreed to. That's consecration. So what does it mean to be in a covenant? To be in a covenant means you've got to be consecrated, then you can see, and then God will step out of his hiddenness. Let me give you a bad example. The Wizard of Oz. Who's that behind that curtain? Remember? Remember? Okay, amen. And what, what happens when they discovered him? They pull away the curtain. And then all the... And what, what did he want? He wanted something so that he could see their worthiness. Amen? That famous story we all saw about a million times. And so now God wants to see if you want to see him. You're going to be consecrated to him for every purpose. And in Hebrews chapter 2, it talks about your consecration. Does anybody know about your consecration? All right, go with me to chapter 2 of Hebrews. Who wrote Hebrews? Paul. Go to Hebrews chapter 2, please. And we're going to start the Ten Commandments in a moment. Good stuff. Are you following? Is this over your head? This is simple enough. Go to Hebrews 2, please. Who wrote Hebrews? If you go all the way down to... All right, we're looking for the word consecration. Did you find it? Verse 10, 11. Another English translation will be consecrated. For it was fitting that we for whom and by all things exist in bringing many sons to glory should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through suffering. Perfect through suffering. For he who consecrates and those who are consecrated have one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to be called them brethren. I will proclaim your name to my brother in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you, and I will put my trust in him. And again, here I am, and the children of God has given me. So there is consecration. Yes, sir. Same thing. You've got to be made holy. You cannot go in to see consecrated to God if you're not going to be holy. If I'm going in cursing, you're not going to see God. If I go in with the schlock life, I'm not going to see God. You've got to be holy. When St. Charbel was buried, tomorrow's his feast day. For 29 days after he was buried, light came out of his grave. Who was that? St. Charbel. With a C? Sometimes with an S. All right. Back with me to Exodus, ma'am. Exodus chapter 19. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down and warn the people, lest they break to the Lord to the gaze, and you can't even gaze upon him. Verse 22. Also the priests who come near to the Lord, consecrate themselves, lest the Lord break out upon them. How many would like to have God break out upon you? You got the meaning of that? And by the way, in the Hebrew, it's like, here's what it means in Hebrew. Smatter you to smithereens. Okay, you got the meaning, a breakthrough? I mean, if you were to read that in Hebrew, when, here's, the, here's the understanding of what God will do if you don't come prepared. You ever see a glass? Take a glass and throw it with all your force down to the ground. Or, or throw it on a rock, what will happen? It's a shattering. So what will happen to you if you stand in front of God, not prepared, not holy, not consecrated, you'll be shattered. That's the Hebrew. Yes. This is also the wearing of the, uh, the white in order to get into the kingdom of God. This is correct. Matthew 22. And Moses said to the Lord, Are you, are you with me in the next verse, ma'am? Verse 23. 
Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, but you yourself charge us, saying, set bounds around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord said to them, go down and bring up Aaron with you, but do not let the priests and the people break through to come up. You see the play on the word breakthrough? If they break through to come up to see me, I'm going to break through on them. And they're going to be smothered to smithereens. So you see the word, uh, uh, there's a play on the word break. Everybody see that there? And go up to the Lord, let's be break, break out against them. Everybody see that? Now again, the, the Hebrew is so strong, it means shattered to a million pieces. If you want to get there. So Moses went down to the people and told them. All right, now, everybody look at your first sheet on the Ten Commandments. Everybody see your first sheet on the Ten Commandments? Everybody should have three sheets. Do you have three sheets there? All right, now you're going to get, next week, you're going to get the rest of the Ten Commandments. All right, you got this? Oh, two weeks. Now, just to remind you, when the Ten Commandments are coming, they're coming down in what? Fire. Now, that's the same bush that was got up here. Now, they were, they were, the word is not made, they were cut. They had to be cut out of material that was not used with human instrumentation. If they used a knife, what is a knife a sound of? I don't mean cutting your steak tonight. If I used a knife, that means I'm a person of war, or I'm killing something, right? Yeah. So they could not use anything to make this with anything human. So what did God have to do? He puts down one, two, three, four, five. Now in Catholic understanding, they call this the meeting with God. Then on the other side, it's six, seven, nine and ten okay remember that remember I gave you the sheet last week now in order to understand the Jewish people believe every commandment has equal weight every commandment has equal weight but when we study the Ten Commandments it's on stone why is it on stone because you cannot erase the stone that's how it got written in stone right? yes you cannot, you cannot erase a stone. So in other words, these commandments are what? Set in stone. Right. They can't be changed. And also, number two, they're forever. When I was a pastor at St. Antoninus, to this very day, we put on the front lawn the Ten Commandments. Do you remember the riots in Newark? Yes. Do you remember all those things that went on? Do you know it's an amazing thing? With everything that went on, and people were even climbing the roof of St. Antoninus during the, when the tanks were rolling into good old, beautiful Newark, New Jersey. Mm. And you know what? The Ten Commandments were never knocked down. Mm. They, try to they don't understand because they were smashing everything. The Ten Commandments mm. stood up. Interesting. Yeah. And by the way, what are we trying to do to that? Knock them down. Knock them down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Take them off. Yeah. Yeah. So now, in order to understand from a Jewish perspective, you have to look at with me. Commandment, no you want to. You have to look at commandment number one joined to commandment number six. The Catholic understanding, I'm the Lord your God, don't use God's name in vain, and keep holy the Shabbat. Everybody got that? Now, when I say, I'm the Lord thy God, then honor, this would be, honor your father and your mother here. This is, thou shalt not commit adultery. So, no, notice how it's, it's, it's being lined up. So let's look at that. So now, Take the um, commandments. All right, now every, everybody got sheet number one? Do you, do you see your Hebrew? Okay, she, 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 she. Hi, hi. <laughs> okay, everybody look at, see where it says 20 verse one? Everybody with me, say amen. Amen. Okay, 
Now, you ready to read it in Hebrew? Yes. You can barely see it. Are you ready to read it in Hebrew? You got that? <laughs> now everybody find the word. Everybody find the word on there. Elohim. Do you see the word Elohim? Yes. And look at the translation. Okay, when you look at the word translation, you can see it there. See Elohim? Now look at the, the word there, kol. K-O-L, see it? Right, that's the word for what? Voice. Do you see it? Now, at this time, God is going to come out of his haluk, and he's going to start to speak. Now, what's going to happen when we read the rest of this covenant? They're going to get so scared, they're going to say, tell God to stop talking. I'm scared. Now, say you have three kids, and your wife said to the three kids, wait till your father comes home. I don't know if she ever did that. You think she ever did that? Oh, no, she never did that. No. Why? Because the father is more authoritarian and he's going to give it to you. But of course, he came back and it was a little mouse. Yeah. Ah, don't worry about it. And you're like, now, when God of the universe speaks, they start to shake. Amen? All right, so there's the Hebrew for you. Now, go back to your English, chapter 20. And remember, it's going to be found in two places. It's going to be found in only two places in the entire Bible. All the Ten Commandments are mentioned. <coughs> Chapter 20 of Exodus and Deuteronomy 5. Okay, you got that? Yeah. All right, so now, let's look at this. So now, look at the word on your sheet, Elohim. Everybody see Elohim? Elohim. Now, God has many names in the Bible, right? This particular name for God in the Bible is the word for mercy. Now, if you recall, um, if, if, you, if you hold your spot there and go back to Genesis 1, 26, when he created us. Go back to Genesis 1, 26. What word do you see there for God? Put in there the word Elohim. All right, now we see the word for Elohim. Elohim. Is everybody with you? Are you there, sister? Are you in Genesis 126? All right, now see the word for God? Right in the word Elohim. So when God starts to reveal himself to us, it's mercy. Now when God comes out of his haluk, it's mercy. Okay, so far so good? Am I, is that over anybody's head? Alright, we, we, we got to go slow because we're going into a different lingo language. Amen? So notice when God takes off his haluk, when it comes out of his hiddenness, it's the word Elohim. Now you saw it in Hebrew, right? We showed you the Hebrew, the phonetics. Now we showed you the first revelation. What's the revelation of God to us in Genesis 1.26? Let us make and our image, okay? Now when you have the word Elohim, Elohim. When you have the word Elohim, this is such a powerful word. It means the explosion of God. How many have ever seen a firework go off? What happens? It goes like this. Right? 
I was in Disney with friends, and I, what Disney did that day was they shot off three of them at one time in different directions in the sky. And I saw kaboom, kaboom, and kaboom. And all of a sudden I said, that's really nice. But what I saw was kind of an Elohim image, it just went. So there's the plural, I am. It means literally in Hebrew, gods. We only believe in one God. But God is so powerful, we just gotta say, gods. It's not proclaiming, I believe, that there's more than one. There's only one, but God's. Well, it's power. It's the power. So when you see the Ten Commandments coming, what do we just see? Fire. The 70 nations, the kolot. And then all of a sudden we say, God's. So powerful that you would have to take your face and put it on the ground. May I make a suggestion to us? When you do your holy time, that's a good thing to do. What I try to do when I'm alone is always have my prostration time. Just really going to bowing before the King of Kings. Do you do that in your apartment in, in Carteret? Just go before the Lord. Lock your door. Maybe if you can do that and say, Elohim! Okay, everybody ready with me to go? All right, back with me to chapter 20, ma'am, of Exodus. She wants me to repeat where it is so she knows where we are. I don't blame you. We like it. Fast. You like it? Yes. Exodus 20, verse 1. Okay, everybody got your, your sheets out? Okay, everybody with me? Yeah. Now, let me give you another quick Hebrew lesson. It's very quick. In Hebrew, there's two words for I. The word is ani or anoki. Ani or anoki. Ever say ani? Anani. Anoki. Anoki. Now when we read our Bible in English, we're missing a lot. Well, El Shaddai is also God. Yeah. When we read a Bible in English, we miss a whole lot. Now, now that you can do it on your machines, is he saying Ani or Anaki? If God says Ani, it means all is well. When he says Anaki, all is not well. Just step back. Okay? When he uses the word when, when he uses the word I. So even even though, even, how we know we miss a lot when we read our Bibles, mm -hmm. that we miss it, Ani or Anoki. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example of Anoki. In Genesis chapter 6, man, but you can say right there, he's very upset with the crowd that sinned. You know the story of Noah, right? And he says, I am sorry that I made them. Do you remember that line in, in Genesis 6? Everybody remember that? Mm -hmm. She hates that line. Now does God say Ani or Anoki? Anoki. Anoki. So you already, you, you got, because again, when you read a sentence in Hebrew, you already understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. As God is my witness, one day I was, I was with the friars of the renewal around my kitchen table. And I was sharing with them some of these treasures. And all of a sudden, I saw the words in Hebrew starting to move. <laughs> and I went, wow, they're moving. And I got all excited. I was ready to dance around the table. I said, these words are moving right in front of me. So when God is really pleased with you, he says, Ani. When you have three sons, Anoki. <laughs> or two sons and a daughter, or two daughters and a son. What is Anaki. So what is Adonai? Adonai is his Lord. Adonai. Okay? So, so sister. Anaki means God is angry? Yeah. yeah. Well, when you, when you read the Hebrew, it says, I love you. 
I think I need to talk with you. <laughs> now, in, in, in English, it's the same. Ah. But in Hebrew, there's two different. So when you're reading in Hebrew, guess what? All of a sudden, you just pick up immediately. Um, can I give you one interpretation? Uh, God's not too thrilled with us right now. Why? Because when you're reading in Hebrew, do you see the little advantage they have when they read the Bible? Anoki! Mm -hmm. Sister, are you getting this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, look, look at the first thing there. He says, here's the English translation. Here's the, this is the literal translation, okay? I, I think we should get literal Bibles. Would you like one, sister? <laughs> A literal Bible. Uh, a literal Bible is exactly what the words say. Look, this he I have the, I'm going to show you the small Bible, the gold, and the outside symbol. The, the sword, and just like the English and then Hebrew. Right. Is that what you're talking about? Well, here is, this is, see where it says, this is on the top, see the notes, this is the mechanical translation. That means the literal. Mm. Okay, now, so if you were going to read it, what does it actually say in Hebrew? Ready? You see your English? And he will much speak. Now this is straight down words. So we don't speak much speak. He'll speak a lot, right? But what does it say in Hebrew? He will much speak. Whoa. You see it there? Elohim. So what are we getting? We're getting a word of what? Power. And also mercy. Let me know mercy is power. At all the words, the these. Now, what did we say the these there? Because they like putting in the word the a lot. <laughs> when you read the New Testament in Greek, they'll always say the Jesus. So notice, notice there it says the words, the these, and said, and Elohim, bum, 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 bum spoke all these words say in the word saying it says it could be translated he when, it, when you, if you put in the word saying there it means a progressive sense so when this happens God doesn't say it once he's saying it so what does that tell you already about the commandments does everybody know? We believe because of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that Jesus spoke how many words on the cross? Seven. But guess what he did? He kept saying it. He kept saying it. So that's the sense there. You see it there? See the word saying on your sheet? No, you want it. All right. All right. Amen? Good stuff? All right, now, let's look at our English. Chapter 20, ma'am. Verse 1. In your Bible, ma'am. And God spoke all these words, saying... Now, look at, look at all I just read for you in Hebrew. All right, now, look at your sheet now. Everybody go to ch chapter 20, verse 2 on your sheet. Everybody see chapter 20, verse 2? All right, here's the Hebrew, right? Anoki, hello. Uh oh Whoa. Is that a shocker, huh? <laughs> now, how many thought we were all going to say Ani? Mm. The Anoki, why? That's a shocker, isn't it? Mm. Because what did we just hear about going up the mountain? What did we just, I told you the meaning in Hebrew that if you went up the mountain unprepared, what would God do? Yes. Right now, so what about these commandments? Take me serious. Take me serious. You got it. Just, just everybody circle the word anoki there. Does everybody understand that? Uh -huh. Just by that word anoki, mm. we have a brand new meaning of the commandment. Mm. That's why we teach our kids. That's why we should memorize it. That's why this is what? Where is it? It's in stone. Oh. Interesting. How many are learning something new right now? So uh, I could just see Jackie walking around the kitchen to her kids. Anoki. Anoki. You die. Or you die, right? Okay, everybody see that? All right, let's read this. 
Anoki Adonai Elohenu Asher Hotzetika Me'eret Mitzrayim Me'bet Arvadim. Okay. Now, in case you're sitting there going, huh? <laughs> All right, go to the next page, please. Okay, is this good? Yeah. By the way, you never study the Ten Commandments like this, ever. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> I, I, hope you, I hope you enjoy this. This, this, this is very powerful. the first Now, here is, here is the meaning. Well, let's read to two. I'm in 22, ma'am. I, the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, let's see what the exact English means. I, now, everybody, uh, look at Y-H-W-H, everybody with me? You cannot say that word in um, Hebrew, uh, that's why it's taken out of church. I, Y-H-W-H, you're not allowed to say it because how many pronunciations are there? 72. I, the Lord, Elohim. Now, this is a whopper of an expression who God is. Remember, he's coming out of his what? His haluk. He's coming out to, to show, whoa. Are you getting this? Is everybody with me? Are you with me, Ms. Peggy? Do you understand this? I, the Lord, now, he will be, now, put, put uh, do a connection there. See Elohim? See the word power? Okay, that's mercy. You, masculine singular, MS is masculine singular, which I did make, go out, you, MS, from land, what's the name of the land? Egypt, that's how I say Egypt, Mitzrayim, everybody say Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim. Straight, okay, straight, you gotta move straight uh, from the house servant. Now look at Look at your translation in verse 2. Everybody looking at your translation in verse 2. What does your what does your translation say? Out of the house of bondage. What does the Hebrew say? Go straight, get out of there from your house being a what? A servant. Sister Celeste. Now before we go on, are you getting this? Yes. This is why I think tonight and these nights are very important so you can understand the Ten Commandments. It's a beautiful song, the Adonai and all these words. Yes, yes. Uh, you could just Google Adonai. Yes, in Genesis 15. Now, look at the next line there. They say it can mean this, I. Now, see in parentheses, am. It's not there. Mm. It's not in your Bible. Mm. I, He, Elohim, who made you go out from the land of Mitzrayim, from the house of servants. Now you're supposed to go what? What, what, what do we, Mitzrayim is Egypt, right? What do we got to do? We got to go right out. We got to move. Now, here's a very important point. Sister, are you getting this? Is it good stuff? All right, now, when we look at the Hebrew, and, and by the way, I'd like to do more of this with you, because you're going to get into the, um, the deep, the, the, the deep, deep meaning. All right, now watch this. Is, there, is this good stuff, sir? Yes. Now, look at her, her look is on the back of you. Oh, I didn't see this. Her haluk. <laughs> she has her haluk on. All right, now, watch this. In the Hebrew, I want you to look at verse number two again in your English, and there's no verbs there. Mm. Everybody know what a verb is? Did you pass grammar 101? There's no verbs. No verbs at all? None. So what is this called? When it was written in Hebrew, given to us by God through, through Moshe, this is called 
Uh, I'm going to give you a little grammar right now. Are you ready for your grammar? This is called a nominative sentence. Nominative sentence means only nouns. Let me give you an example. Um, Johnny wanted to hit the ball in the park. Johnny, the ball in the park. That's what I would say with a nominative sentence. I didn't use any noun, any verbs. Here's what God says. Now, did they hear? Remember, they heard this what? Audibly. Now, what are the first two they're going to hear is the two audibles. All right, this one and the next one. So, please put in your sheet. Audible. Amen? All right, and you can put in verse 3 there, audible. Now, let me tell you how. Now, if you look at your sheet with me again, everybody with me at sheet, we're still in verse 2. Everybody look at me in your sheet in verse 2. So, notice there, I, the four letters, Adonai, Elohim, you, which I, you, from land, Mitzrayim, from house servant. So what did I do is I took out all of the what? Verbs. Verbs. Now, why does God speak in a nominative sentence? Does everybody understand nominative? It means only all the nouns. I had nuns that drilled this into me. The nominative means the first commandment is so powerful that it has to go pound, pound. I. Oh! God! Let's, let's read it in English now. I'm in verse 2, man. I, the Lord your God. See Adonai? Adonai, which we can't pronounce. Elohim. Who? You! You! Out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. But what does the Hebrew say? Out of servants. Mm. Out of servants. Now, who do you remember, sister, that was a servant in the house? Joseph. Because Joseph was under Potiphar. Do you remember that? So now, you are no longer slaves. So what's the meaning of commandment number one? Are you getting this, Miss Jackie? Is it good? Okay. That's why I wish everybody was hearing to get this. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a jewel here. Okay? So put in there that God, that this is, he's so involved that he wants, he took you out of the most powerful empire known to mankind and set you free. That everybody in this church you are not a slave. You're not even a house servant. What was a house servant? If you're right in the house servant, property. 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 You are property. How many ever felt like property? It's called the place you work. Hmm. <laughs> Sometimes, can I, be, can, I, can I go to confession to y'all now? I don't know, Primo would say the same thing. I feel, they feel like they own me. Amen? Amen? Okay, does everybody got number one? Now we're going to see next week, you gotta shave your, or two weeks, we're gonna match this up with the sixth commandment. You're gonna see something that will blow your mind. When I understood the background of the Bible, I always put this by number one. The first commandment leads the way. When you have something first, if I ever say to you, um, the first thing I want to say to you, what am I implying to you if I say the first thing I want to say? There's something else coming. Mm -hmm. So you've got to sit down because you don't know if I'm going to give you two, three, four, five. So the first thing I would like to say to all of you is, and then you've got to say, all right, you said the first, now there is a second. second. So now this is the first. But the Jewish people believe the next one 
It's the same as this one. It's the same as this one. It's the same as this one. Yes, sir. So the Israelites are the oppressed people, right? So Absolutely. So it makes them free and a new way to live. Absolutely. But what word did he use? But what word did he use, sister? 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 What word did he use? The anarchy. Whoa. So even though we're free, everybody here is free. Don't mess with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you ready to do one more before we split? Is this good? Okay, everybody look on your sheets. We're going to look at 20 verse 3. Everybody with me? Say amen. 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 All right, let's see what this means. You, we're in verse 3, ma'am. Verse 3 of chapter 20. Man. She gets nervous. No, the word lo. See, see the first word, verse 3, lo? Mm -hmm. If you circle the word lo there and write the word not. Yeah, it's right underneath. Mm -hmm. Lo yihye leka Elohim achirim al panay. Now, but look at the last word there. Panay. Good pronunciation. I'm telling your mother you're getting an A. <laughs> Panai is before my face. Mm -hmm. Now look at look at your English in your Bible. You shall have no other gods before me. It doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. What does it say? Don't put anything before my face. Now we have a, a bad expression. I can't stand this English. Get out of my face. Right. How many ever heard that one? You're in my mm. face. Mm. Primo, you know, you're in my face. <laughs> you got an issue, man. So look at the last word there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good stuff? Okay, now, here's what it means in this rendition. Not he will exist to you. There should be no one. Now look at the word there. You, masculine singular. Elohim. Wait a minute. God just called himself what? Elohim. What do we always confuse? This Elohim with false gods called Elohim. Yeah. Do you see it there? Don't put these before me. Brother, it seems like Elohim is being used in the singular in case of Yahweh in the previous verse, and here it's plural, and yet it's. The Elohim, same it's, 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 no, they're both plural. I am. No, I mean, first is uh, in verse 2. In the singular, yes. No, look at verse two. In, 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 look at verse two in, in the Hebrew. Wait, right? I want you to get this. Yes. So, just it's the same word. I put this in the green. It's the same word, the same pronunciation. Don't put this before this. Right, but the one in the purple there. It's E L O H M. I am. In the Hebrew, it's why am I, I put I am here. Yes, same spelling? Yes, same thing. Now, when you, when you read the Bible, they're going to use that word for false gods also. But you got to make sure you, and because, by the way, look what brought us out of Egypt. Elohim. Oh, it sounds correct. Wait a minute. Please identify yourself. Please identify yourself. That's why, see so you have three kids. And they, they, they come home and they said, Mom and Dad, here's what they say to you. Let me give you an example of what this means. 
say you have three kids. Say you have interesting kids. And they'll say to you, to get you off their back, I believe in God. <laughs> A God. Now, of course, you don't think they have other gods. So you're like, yeah, but now you understand what this means. Mm. I believe in God, but not the God who got me out of Egypt. Mm. So now, look at verse 2. We're, we're going through this slow. Is this worth going through this slow? Yeah. You shall have no other gods. Now, the Hebrew is, if you're writing your Hebrew, are you writing Hebrew, sister? Sister, are you writing the Hebrew? Sister? Now, it's, God says, don't put anyone before my face. Hmm. And that anyone could be anything that you use as an idol. Now, let's, let's break this down real quick as our time is up. Not, how do you say not, everybody? No. 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 He will exist to you. These gods don't exist. But guess what? By you calling upon them, you're bringing them into existence. Mm. You're opening the door. And I'm going to do on Sunday another uh, teaching on spiritual warfare. This Sunday. Not he will exist to you, Elohim. That Elohim doesn't exist. Look at the next word. Power, other, upon face, says me, other Elohim. Power, he will not exist. <laughs> you upon my face. Why do they put the four in there? Because the word is there. But in order for us to speak English, we've got to put the word for, for you upon my face. Now, what does it mean upon my face? Offense. Offense. Mm -hmm. If something's on my face, because I'm so handsome, if something's on my face, I want to get it off. You know, I gotta powder myself up in the morning. Yeah, he's he's saying here, don't make these other gods, which can be Satan and the fallen right. angels, don't make them, they're real. Don't let them make you into me, because I am the one true God. And the devils come up to say, Jesus, the north of Galilee, before, uh, uh, after when he's reaching out to these 70 nations, and they say, You are the Son of the Most High. That's yes. as in verse 2. Yes. Son of the Most High. This is the Most High. Yeah, yes. But the, the other Elohim are gods, but they're not the one true God. Yes. Good. Excellent. I, we will continue. Did you learn anything new tonight? Yes. Yeah, How many have heard the Ten Commandments like this? Yes. All right, now please save these sheets. You're getting three more two weeks from today. Okay. We're not here next week. We're getting three more in two weeks from tonight, and we will. We're going to. We're, we're, we'll be inching our way through the Ten Commandments now. Are you, are you, this is good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, did you enjoy that, sister? You got it. Sister. Any questions? Vale la pena. Did you follow Sister Figgy? It's all or nothing. Some of it. Some of it? <laughs> we always give you a lot. So El Shaddai is the whole. You keep saying that. I know because I keep hearing because I listen to you. El Shaddai, Genesis 15, so verse 1 and 2. <laughs> Genesis 15, 1 to 2. Heavenly Father, we just ask your blessings upon this. We thank you for the commandments in our life. We thank you for the beauty which they represent. And we saw even a scary one in the first commandment, the Anoki. And so, Father, may we know that these commandments are written, are put down, and may the, the water of your salvation and spirit guarantee them in our hearts to be lived for. Glory be to the Father. As it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Any questions?